Hey guys, it's Kim here with Fairly Fiber Fun. Thanks for joining me on another carding and spinning video. Um, well, prep and spinning. Anyways, uh, using the new blending board to turn this terrible, terrible alpaca fiber into beautiful yarn. So a little story about this. Um, I was working at a local mill, uh, Spirit Fiber Works, and the owner was carting up a bunch of alpaca that was in horrible condition, according to her. It was going through the carter and falling on the floor instead of coming out and roving. So she picked a bunch of it up off the floor, shoved it in a bag, and said, Here, you can take this home if you want. So it just didn't want to stick together. It's all different lengths. Um, she said it's, it's like dog fur instead of good alpaca. So I thought I would put it on the blending board and mix it with some silk noil and see what I could do with it. So that's that's what you're watching. <laughs> um, there are three distinct colors in the bag. There's probably more than that, but these are the three most distinct colors. And I'm just uh, randomly choosing which color to start with, trying to put all three of them together and I've already done a few different um, order, put the colors on in different orders, and gotten those Rolex made. This is my fourth or fifth blending board full, um, third or fourth, something like that. So uh, it's pretty straightforward, but I was having a lot of trouble getting the fiber to actually stay in the blending board and not come off. So. I'm actually using a little gentle rocking motion with the hairbrush trying to put, the, press the fiber into the carding cloth instead of scraping it. Once I'm done pressing it in, then I'll go through and, and scrape it all down um, like most people do. So now that you've seen the basics and uh, my fight with getting it on the blending board, I have sped it up so this part doesn't get too terribly boring. And uh, I think the most important thing with making Rolex on the blending board is to make sure you fill it up fairly evenly. Otherwise, when you pull your Rolex off, you will have bits and pieces of Rolex instead of one big one. So, hmm, there's that. I think I'm going to turn on some music, let you guys enjoy the rest of this carding part, and then I'll be back at the next stage. Bye! Alright, so we're back to making the roll eggs, and the first one was super easy, came off beautifully, but after that I had trouble. Um, part of it is because the fibers were all different lengths, part of it is because I put them on the blending board in clumps, um, didn't draft it out and put it on beautifully and smooth like you're supposed to, it makes a difference. And part of it's just because the fibers are all different lengths and don't want to stick together 
at all, which is why they ended up all over the floor instead of going through the decorator properly and the mill at the mill. Uh, words, mouth, don't want to work together. Anyway, so I had a little trouble here and there. The last bit didn't want to come off on the last real lag. Um, but, you know, ones that didn't draft properly when I was taking them off broke. It is what it is. They all spun beautifully, so I'm not too terribly worried about it. Um, I did struggle like crazy to get this off, and the whole time I'm thinking this is going to be a nightmare to spin. I was wrong. It was not a nightmare to spin. So here you see I just keep trying and trying at the end. I think I finally just picked up the fiber off the board and wrapped it around the roll egg. Not the best solution, but it worked. So when I was spinning, I tried all different drafting methods and I was spinning super, super slow. So I often didn't get quite enough twist. It's a funny thing about alpaca. It doesn't like twist. Um, it can take a lot, but it doesn't want to. And so it's easy to under twist it. And with all the different lengths, it broke on me several times while I was spinning, but it wasn't anything major and was easily fixed. So I did try drafting. Um, this method right here is a modified supported long draw, I suppose. I did try short backward draw, short forward draw, um, allowing a little twist into the draft zone, keeping twist out of the draft zone. Everything worked really, really well. This was surprisingly easy to spin and surprisingly fun. So if you have stubborn, slippery, don't want to work fibers, um, I recommend Rolex. They are amazing. Um, and if they're short stapled, you could put a little bit more in the roll egg. If they're long stapled, I recommend a little bit less. But just experiment with it. Try it out. Try different things. Um, spinning is great because you can try all different methods and just experiment and have fun. I ended up with a sport weight to ply. I did a center pull ball plying method. And that went smoothly. I think the yarn broke once when I was putting it into a center pull ball and I just tied the ends together and treated it as one yarn. So um, I didn't worry about the knot or anything as I was plying. Uh, I had other thoughts. What were the other thoughts? Uh, blank brain here. Oh, the skein. I don't know the weight. I have not weighed it yet. But I ended up with 248 yards of approximately sport weight. Um, it be, it's very, very fuzzy after washing, which I was not expecting. Um, I would expect Angora to do that, but not alpaca. I don't have a lot of experience with alpaca. And so I don't know if it's just that the fibers were really short or if that's typical for alpaca. Anyway. Um, the idea of this fin was to create a tweed yarn, but the only tweed is white, white silk noiled. So I will have to knit this up and see how it goes. I'm thinking a tiny little shawl or something. I might make some more and make a bigger shawl. I'm not sure. Or a scarf. But it's going to be delightfully drapey and wonderful, so I'm looking forward to knitting with it and seeing what kind of results the fabric gives me. Um, and with that being said, I think I'm going to let you guys enjoy music for the rest of this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any shenanigans and fun and, uh, yeah, crazy voiceovers, stuff like that. Y'all have a fabulous day and I will see you next time. Bye!